Okay, here we are. Starting the ascent of Mount Asahidak, which is right up there. Took a bit of a cheat here to start with, with taking the rope way up, but save you some time. Right now we are at uh, about 1600 meters and going up to the top, 2290, and from there descending on the other side and doing a nice long round loop back to the ropeway station and down. Should take uh, 45 hours about. It's actually surprisingly hot today. Well, not hot. It's about probably 20 degrees centigrade. Uh, I was expecting a bit cooler. Something like 16. That's why I'm wearing a jacket. Might take it off soon. Let's see once we get up in the clouds how cold it is. At least at the top it should be quite cool and nice. Okay, so starting the proper ascent now. But most of the people behind. Still some people up there. Climbing the same route as me. Up to the top of Asahidake. It's a nice contrast. Uh, down below the proper ascent path between the ropeway and, and the ponds. No one says hello, but but once you come up here, anyone you meet will be having a nice konnichiwa. Gambate kudasai to say to you, and of course you say the same back. So it's a bit of a different world up here. I'm of course traditionally wearing the fastest Shoes on the hill. Merrell trail gloves work great in this terrain as long as you watch where you step. There's no point bringing heavy hiking boots up here. It's a well trodden path. Just some sharp lava rocks that you have to watch out for a bit. It's a good wind today. Because those fumaroles smell bad. It's like a really sulfuric, bit of a rotten egg smell. So anytime the wind is away from there, not blowing them over the path, that's great. Just great. Huh. Coming up on the 1800 marker. Sixth station <sighs> means there's only 500, a bit less like 500 vertical meters to go. This pole marks uh, 2,190, meaning that uh, there's only 100 vertical left to go to the top. Unfortunately, the view went out, but you never know, we might catch a break in the cloud cover when we get up there. Let's see. Okay, just about at the top right now. Let's see if we can see anything. A bit of a crowd. Top of Hokkaido. Okay, after a quick lunch, left the party at the top of Asahidake and descending now down into the valley behind and onto the loop trail back to the ropeway. It's a bit of a steep descent here and I'm gonna get loose in a while. This is actually perhaps the hardest section on this trail that's not uh, much but you just have to watch your step a bit and try not to slip and hurt yourself there's a campsite down there but doesn't look like anyone is pitching camp at the moment
That's it. Not too slippery. Ah, this is good snow. Excellent snow. I prefer this to the sand, actually. You can basically just slide down, down. Into the Dicetsu Sun National Park Heartland, which you can't see right now because of the clouds, but it goes on like this for tens of kilometers. It's the biggest national park in Japan. There's some nice routes going through the whole thing, but that's for some other time. Up the hill again. Okay, passing by the next big caldera here to the right. It's pretty impressive. Again, some amazing colors there on the ground, probably from sulfur and the rocks. I guess that's the yellow. So the thing with uh, Daisetsu-san National Park is that it's uh, probably something that we at home in Finland would call a strict nature reserve actually. Uh, you are not supposed to deviate from the marked paths. That's uh, of course uh, a bit of a shame, but I understand it. There's such a huge amount of people here that if everyone would run around as they wish, the nature here probably couldn't take it for long. So that's why they have these ropes usually marking the trail. So even if it's overcast or you're in the cloud, you will have a very hard time to get lost. Of course, in winter time, it's more free for all. It's good backcountry skiing, ski touring all over the place, and uh, huge amounts of snow. So then the trails don't even show up anymore. Then it's all free to use. heavy sulfur residue, greenish, yellowish stuff there on the rocks in the stream. That means it's volcanic, it's coming out of the earth and that means it's uh, probably quite hot. Of course the mainstream is uh, snow melt coming down from the mountain, but there are some springs, hot springs da down here in the gorge and the people have made nice pools to mix the waters so you get a nice kind of a foot bath. On to the plain below the slopes of Asahidake, which is again clouded in. Right here we are below the cloud level already, it would seem we are not uh, much uh, higher than the ropeway actually now, maybe a bit, so I would say 1700 or so. Just the easy stroll along the plain here. Some parts here are a bit swampy from time to time, so They've been kind enough to put out duck boards, uh, which haven't probably been maintained since they were put out, but uh, I appreciate the thought. They are quite handy. Okay, a route marker. They have these at every intersection of the trails. So where we want to go is Sugotami uh, Oike. Sugotami Eki, actually. Sugotami Ponds and Station. That's the top row grey station. It's 2.9 kilometers this way.
say I'm, I'm really grateful for having a trail because this underbrush is uh, just impassable. There's no way, no way you could hike through here if you didn't have this trail. So appreciations to the people who make these. All right, back to the ropeway. 13 kilometers one mountain, some snow, some wet, great trails. Took me about four hours with a lunch break and some shooting pictures. Konnichiwa. That was one of the caretakers of this great national park. That is it, Susan. Much respect to them. Bus. So I'm heading for a bus. That's pretty much it for hiking on the Sahidake on a day trip. What else can you do but say cheers? It was fun. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>